Hello everyone, my name is Javier, member of the UDS technical team, and in this video we're going to see how to deploy and configure a UDS deployment so we can have a full and optimized deployment of a UDS enterprise. So at first, we're going to need access to our my UDS platform and our serial, of course, and we will going to need to get our links for our appliances. As you can see right here, in my case, we are going to use our VMware platform but of course you can use any other platform that UDS Enterprise is compatible with that if you know, there are a lot. So first step will be to download our appliances. Let's get the database, the server and the UDS tunneler. As you can see, once we have all three appliances downloaded, we can go into our platform and start getting into each one of them. Let's deploy first, for example, the database. We'll click on next. We can give it a given name, of course. Where do we want it to be deployed? Okay, let's see that every detail is correct in this case. We can see that it is, so let's go to the next step. And where do we want it to be deployed? In my case, it's going to be this SSD. In my case, it's going to be the LAN network. And we can review every step and we can click on finish and it will start working. So let's do the same thing with the UDS server and the UDS tunneler. So as you can see, once we have all three appliances imported, we can start configuring each one of them. We'll start with the database and the server and then the tunneler. So let's start with our database. Let's turn it on and let's launch the web console in my case so we can see what's happening inside. Great, we're inside already. We need to access this machine so we can give it an IP direction. And in this case, it's the only thing that we're going to need to configure. So let's enter with root and the password that it's UDS by default. We are going to edit uh, the following file. Here in HTC network and interfaces, if I'm not incorrect, yes. And now let's change the adapter for the one that we want, for the IP and the address that we want. So here let's put 8070. In my case, this is going to be the IP. Then the net mask, that's going to be, in my case, 255.255.255.0. And of course, we're going to need a gateway that in my case is going to be dot one. Let's save our changes. And now we can reboot the machine or the networking service, whatever you guys need. And we can see that we already have the new IP. Then after this, the database is already prepared. Let's start the next step, the DDS server. Let's launch the console. Okay, once that we are inside, once we have uh, an IP direction in the case that we have the HTTP, as you can see right here, we are going to need to access via HTTPS. And of course, as you guys can see, you have your new security code that we are going to need for the next step of the configuration. So next step is going to see the IP. In the case that we don't have an IP, we can tell the appliance what IP it's going to use. As you can see with the command UDS IP, you can give the appliance directly the IP that you want. If that IP is free, you can use it. So now let's enter the configurator, the web configurator with HTTPS, of course, remember, 
and with the IP that we were given before by the DHCP and the port 9900 as right now we don't have any certificates this page will appear so we will need to give it telling to continue in my case uh, we'll tell Spanish or English let's put it in English better for everyone don't need this and we can click on next we can click on next again Here in our network is where we are going to tell them the IP of this appliance. Let's give it a new domain. This is only if needed. Hostname will leave it as it is, or we can change it if we need it also. Put that. And of course the IP that we're going to need. So in my case it's going to be dot 71, correct. And then our gateway and the net mask, correct. In the case that you have a DNS server, we of course you can put the IP there if you need it. Let's click on next to see if the appliance validates our configuration. As you can see on the top of the page, we have the IP that right now has been changed for the new one, for the dot .71. As we were saying before, we are going to tell the appliance the setup code, the security code that we have seen in the appliance at the start. So remember, we are going to need this part of the appliance and remember this code, so we can type it here. Let's type it. Okay, so if everything's correct, we can go on the next step. Date and configuration here, of course, uh, the time important for the logs, so we can have the logs on the correct date. And here we can put in my case, we're going to put Madrid as I am in Spain in Madrid right now. But of course, whatever country you guys are in, you can type it. In the case you, need, you have an NTP server, of course, you can also put it. So next step is going to be to connect to our database. You can be connect to a local one of the remote appliance as it's always recommended to use the remote one so let's use the appliance that we have configured before let's tell them the ip that we put just a couple of minutes earlier dot 70 and by default the names of the users are going to be uds password it's also going to be uds in case that you have configured the tls configuration in the database you can put it by by default it is not so let's leave it by default and the database that we're going to use is going to be called UDS also. So let's click on next and it will start configuring our database. Great. Next step is going to be the activation of UDS. So we are going to have two options. We have the online option or the offline option in the case we don't have internet connection in the machine so of course we this machine has internet connection and we are going to give it the serial the subscription and we'll click on next to see if everything goes okay correct as you can see next step will be the security step so the password that we are going to use first one will be the root console and for the super user of the administration here in the security part we have two types of security we have a hardened installation in this case you will only it will only be used tls 1.3 you can only connect via https it will be a much secure uh, installation of course the password will need to be more complex if you use the hardened installation so as you can see we're going to need 12 characters at least but in this case, just for you guys to see, we're coming to use a standard installation so everything goes more easily. So let's start with the password. In this case, it's going to be an easy one. It's going to be UDS. Super user, we always recommend it to be called UDS admin. But of course, in this case, you can put any, num any name that you guys want. So let's put it UDS and click on next. Okay, as you guys can see, next step will be the certificates. Um, in the case you have certificates, you can put them there, but in this case, we are not going to use them. Remember that they have to be in a PEM format. 
in the case you want to use them. So in our case, let's leave it for now by default. Let's click on next. And the next step and final step will be to reboot the machine. So we can see now how the machine is going to reboot. We can close this and let's leave it doing its work. Next and one of the final steps will be to enter the tunnel. Very important part. So let's take this into account because this is going to be a very important part of our configuration. Same as with the UDS server, we will have assigned uh, an IP via our DHCP. And of course, if you need it, you can use the command UDS IP to put one. Let's enter the web configuration with the IP that we were given. I think it was 349900 as the port. I correct, X accept, and let's start the new configuration. Let's put this in English, better for everyone. Okay, we'll click on next, click on next again, and we'll get into the networking part. Here we will make the changes that we need. Uh, the domain, in my case, I'm going to change it. Of course, the IP is going to be a new one. I think it's 172 in my case and our gateway so we can have internet connection and then DNS servers in case that you need them you can put it. Let's click on next and the appliance will try to validate this new configuration low so let's give in some seconds. Okay correct same as we did with the UDS server we are going to need the security code the setup code that we were given at the start of the appliance you have it right there so let's type it correctly our keyboard in my case will change it but of course the distribution keyboard that you guys have or you guys want let's put it in Spanish uh, NTP the server, in my case Madrid, and we can click on next. In this case, in this part, we are going to connect with the UDS server. And as you can see in the 3.6 version, it's going to be needed to be done via HTTPS, a secure connection. So here in the server, even if we put the IP of our server and this one will read our authenticators, it will not work. We are going to need to resolve by name our UDS server. Of course, we are going to use our new functionality that we had added. So can this configuration can be done and the certificate that the UDS server uses can be resolved. We can have different options. The first one will be we have a UDS server with no certificates or no web certificates. These servers will have a self-signed certificate. So the server will need to trust this new self-certificate that the UDS server has. And it will add it into the certificate that the tunnel trust, the trusty certificates. Another example can be have a certificate on our web with our DNS, but in our internal network, that DNS cannot resolve that IP of our server. So we are going to need to use this new functionality. Or last option, we want to trust the certificate of the UDS server and the UDS tunneler. That's going to be our case. As our server doesn't have any type of certificate, we are going to use the self-signed one that we have. We are going to access our tunnel and this will be the new functionality. UDS trust will be the command that we are going to need to use. We will tell it the IP of our UDS server, that's 71, and the port 443. As you can see, we will read the certificate that we have in the UDS server. In its case, it's going to be UDS, the name of the certificate, and it will be updated inside of the UDS tunneler as a trusted certificate. Of course, as you can see, let me show you in the host uh, file of the tunnel it has been added the IP of the UDS server and the name so it will resolve this name 
This is important for the configuration part, as here in the UDS server, we can tell it the name, not the IP, UDS. It will read the only authenticator that we have, that's the administration. As you remember, we have a super user that we configured before. It will be UDS admin, if I'm correct, and UDS as its password. We'll click on next, and this is how you can trust the self-signed certificate and UDS server. Before we continue, we want to explain one new example. In the case that we have, let's say, a DNS certificate or a web certificate of the a wildcard, a wildcard type. We are going to use again the same command UDS trust with a server that has a wildcard certificate. So you can see the difference. As you can see, as it is a wildcard certificate, the name it will be like this all.udsenterprise.com. Of course, it will depend on the certificate, but for you guys to see the changes. As you can see, I'll show you in the HTC in the host file. We'll see that it has added for the dot six the all.udsenterprise.com name. So it will resolve this name also. For example, of course, we are going to use the dot seventy one one with its name that it's UDS. So if we go back, I can show you. In our case, it's the UDS our name. So Let's click on next again and go with our security parts. Once with this next step, let's start with the security for the UDS server appliance. Remember for the appliance, in our case, it's going to be UDS, both parts. Same as before, if we need or we want certificate for the UDS server, we can indicate it right here. Once that, we can reboot the UDS server, the UDS tunneler, sorry, and we are close to finish our configuration. Once our tunnel is already rebooted, we will be able to access our UDS server. Of course, we are going to need the IP that we have put before in the UDS server. Let's click on continue. And as you can see, we already have our deployment on our web page. In the case that we want to make sure that our tunnel is working, we can tell in our browser the IP of our tunneler or the name and the port 10443. So we can make sure that the, all our transports, for example, HTML5 transports can work. So if you see this web page, it will mean that the tunnel is working correctly. So with this simple steps, we can have an, a new deployment of UDS Enterprise and we can start working with it. I hope that this video can help you a lot. Have a great day. Bye bye.